Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Last time we were looking at Tavli, which was one way we connected a, an AI LLM to the internet. We ask a question, it goes on a search engine, it searches a bunch of results, compiles them together, and gives you an answer. Now, if you have ChatGPT+, you already have that. It will search through Bing, uh, a couple results and try and compile an answer for you. It works okay if you ask very basic questions. So for example, what the best selling video game console is in 2023, even on a Google search, you'd probably find the right answer in one, two, maybe three results. And that's why ChatGPT is really good at that. On the other hand, if you start asking more difficult questions, things that have nuances, things that you need to look at 5, 10, 15 different results to get to an answer, a reasonable answer, ChatGPT starts falling apart. And this is true with Bing Copilot as well, which uses very much the same strategy. You ask a question, it turns it into a good web search, and then it looks at five, maybe 10 different results before telling you what it thinks. Now, last time we used Tavily, which is an API that's basically a search engine that allows you to, to find the five or 10 results outside of the LLM of your choice. And so in theory, you can connect all of these offline LLMs like Llama or Claude or GPT, pick and choose, then connect it to Tavli to do the search, take the results from Tavli, put it back into the LLM. That is okay. Uh, it actually worked pretty decently, but uh, it's a lot of steps and it's actually quite hard and difficult to build up. So I started looking at other search engines that would be good for my use case. And I wanted to highlight two of them for you. And today we're actually going to focus on perplexity and just browse through the API uh, a little bit. I don't think we're going to build anything today. I just wanted to take a look and see what is possible. I suspect we will find something quite interesting here. Um, so let's begin. Uh, Perplexity.ai and maybe I should zoom in just a little bit, is uh, very reminiscent of ChatGPT. You have the sidebar, you could close it, or you can um, expand it out somehow. Here we go. And you can ask a question and start a conversation. Um, where perplexity is really trying to sell itself is it's actually claiming to be uh, the future of search engine. It's trying to beat Google at its own game, and I guess it lines up closely with how Bing and Bing Copilot is uh, pushing itself. And the idea is if you search something, let's say Vision Pro first day, first sales day, um, it gives you an answer. This is what you would see on Bing or on ChatGPT, but what it does is it shows you the sources. If you turn on Copilot, it's going to let you continue that conversation, ask it more questions about those sources or, um, or list more sources. So this is one of those easy to, easy to research questions and, and you don't need 5, 10, 15 different sources. But if I go with a new thread um, and we'll turn on Copilot this time, I can ask it something a little more sophisticated. And let's say, what are the reasons for the Bronze Age collapse? Something a little more academic. Um, for context, uh, as far as I know, there's no clear single answer and there's a lot of debate. This is a good one where to do it, to do research properly, you should be looking at different perspectives from different sources. And here you can see it found eight different sources. Uh, Wikipedia is fine in my opinion as a source. Um, 
and probably a great place to start anyways. And then you can see none of these are, are particularly reputable except maybe maybe LibreTex and NIH. I don't know what they are, but if we click into it, <clears throat> this is a interesting paper here, um, a whole academic paper. So very good as a source. And so you're going to see uh, no single cause. Scholars have proposed different, uh, several theories, which is really good. It shows that there's a bit of nuance and, and differences, and you'll see environmental factors, societal factors, technological factors. And we could continue um, having this conversation because of Copilot. So for example, uh, let's just go with their pick. What were the long-term effects of the Bronze Age collapse? And again, it's looking at much the same sources, if not identical. I don't think I saw a study. Oh, no, I did. Um, UPenn, that looks like a new source. So uh, it's picking up new sources, uh, expanding further in, in describing it. And what I found was perplexity was really, really good at answering questions that I need to set a bit of time to, to research. Um, I, I don't know about you, but uh, I like surfing the net and sometimes I, I like taking 15 minutes or, or a half hour just diving into a topic and, and I think this is going to really change how I'm going to approach those in the future. So I love perplexity. I, I, I found its results very, very good and you can see this is how it's, it's dealing with it. It's understanding the questions, searching the web finding uh, sources and then putting out an answer. So it, I, I have found it so, so much better than ChatGPT Plus or, or Bing Copilot in answering these questions. Uh, the other one I really uh, enjoyed looking at is, is this one, Assistant by Sight. And I'm just going to make sure I copy the question exactly. But this one is very much an AI geared towards searching academic papers. And so if I paste this one here, um, it's generating a search strategy, running the searches, it's a bit slower, but what's interesting is it is searching publications. And you're going to see these are, you know, classic bibliogra bibliography style no, uh, citations and this is a much more uh, academic type of answer or citing papers uh, only only um, citing papers and only using papers it has a reference uh, it's written in a way where it is mentioning which papers it comes from and I don't know if you saw but in the steps it even had a little bit at the end to fact check itself so it's really trying to counter that hallucination piece uh, again all of these fair warning you don't want to use them without human oversight but I found this interesting, and, and there are others that search uh, just popular websites, um, different sources, but I thought Sight was, would have been really useful if I was still in school to start that academic research stuff. So um, I'm not going to read this. This one looks a bit more painful to read through. Okay, so... Um, where I ended up was I loved perplexity and what I wanted to see is whether I could, um, whether I could find an API with perplexity because I think there was one. And we're going to take a look here. So perplexity has an API and why I would want to do this is that uh, I might want to build my own app. Um, it's, it's fine that we're all using these chatbots to uh, go into their website, ask questions. This is a very nice interface, very easy and approachable. But what if I wanted to programmatically do this? What if, for example, I wanted to automate it so I do research and then output a paper afterwards? let's say. Um, I don't want to sit here, wait for it to do its co-pilot thing, and then ask it follow up to, can you rephrase it 
in a paper form. I want to do it all in the back end. Uh, the other reason is um, you might want to build apps with it. Uh, one of the things that I've considered is potentially just hitting up multiple sources uh, all at once. So, for example, if I have this question, what are the reasons for the Bronze Age collapse, I might put it into Anson's chatbot, put it at the top, and it will search ChatGPT, perplexity, um, Bing Copilot site all in parallel and present them all together. Or even cooler, I might stick it in Langchain and have these different sources, different types of search that look at different places in the internet, and then finally put it through one last LLM and say, taking all of these results together, can you give me a report that you know, does consider Wikipedia, that uh, some of the popular websites and maybe some news, and finally some um, academic papers as well. So just a couple ideas, uh, who knows, but I wanted to see if there was an API because perplexity was one of the models that really, really impressed me. Now we know there is one. And so if we get started, Of course, the first thing they want to know is uh, getting the payment right. Uh, so of course you have to uh, pay for usage for all of these things. So input um, input your, your payment features. Um, hmm. Star Wars. OK. That, uh, OK, here we go. API reference. And so this is where I think we're going to see the most interesting stuff. Um, we can click try it. Uh, where's the token? Okay, so I don't think they're providing us a token. It must be something that we have to take after we put in our uh, put in my credit card. So I'm not going to do that just yet. But if we take a look, we can see that there's really just the one API call. So there's not a lot of options here. And if we go down here, you're going to see this is a call. Uh, this If you look at this, um, this will look very familiar to any chat or GPT API users. You pick a model, you have the messages. And what's interesting is there's a bunch of different models here. Um, Llama 2, Code Llama, uh, these ones are from Meta, and Mistral and Mixtral is from a company in France, I think France. And these are open source models. I suspect what we need to do is the perplexity models down here. And I think what we're looking for must be the 70 billion parameter, obviously larger is better, but the online model so that it is able to ask and, and um, um, reach online. Okay, and then we just have your messages. We have max token temperature, top P. These are all super standard. This is where I think we're gonna have a nasty surprise. Well, that's not super helpful. Um, One second here. Okay. Um, so what I'm noticing immediately is that uh, the output has a message, content, and role. 
I don't know what Delta is, but I was hoping that this would look more like ChatGPT today rather than six months ago, where they might have uh, additional pieces within the message um, in which they could put additional data. Because I think the most important piece of all of this is whether we're going to get those um, those citations. That's what makes or breaks the usage of this API. So, I'm going to suspect there hasn't been very much done here. Um, updated 11 days ago. Okay, uh, I'm just going to stop here because I uh, there's very little in this API reference. And I, I wasn't planning to actually run this through. Um, but I, I suspect just because of how this is structured that we're not seeing the citations. I think it's almost a pass through for something, say, Llama. There, it, it, it wouldn't cite things. It wouldn't have online access. So I think this is just a very new API. And, and we're not going to see what I was hoping to see, which is through here. So for now, Let's hold off on automating uh, searches for perplexity, but hopefully you're uh, now introduced to two very new uh, and useful chatbots for you to use um, today. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next week with another uh, project, AI-related or not. Thanks for watching.